Good day. I'm Andrea Spindle, Executive Director of the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation and your host for today's web talk, the third in our series on extremism and anti-Semitism. To support our webinars and help fund resources for combating anti-Semitism and our research and advocacy projects, please donate online at www.caef.ca or send a check to the address shown on our website. If you are in the US, the website will take you to a site where you can donate and receive the charitable receipt for US. Thanks to the Muriel and Gershon Cohn Foundation for sponsoring today's webinar. This foundation exists across the pond and reached out to CAF and offered significant support. And for this, we are extraordinarily grateful. We also thank all of the organizations that have supported us and partnered to spread the word about this and other important webinars organized by CAF. Thanks to Sherwood Canada, Jewish Resistance, Americans for Peace and Tolerance, the Israel Activist Calendar, Matatias Project, New England Friends of the March of the Living, Israel Committee of Sonoma County, the Atlanta Israel Coalition, Scholars for Peace in the Middle East, Muslims Facing Tomorrow, European Lawyers for Israel, Habith and Eastim, the Canadian Institute for Jewish Research, Volodger Synagogue, Combat Antisemitism Movement, UK Lawyers for Israel, Stand With Us Canada, the Israel Advocacy Alliance, the Bedin Center for Near East Policy Research, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, and Jew Hatred Canada, the Deborah Project, Jewish NGOs at the UN, North Carolina Coalition for Israel, the Israel Action Committee of the East Bay, the J.CA, the Afghanistan Israel Friendship Association, Doctors Against Racism and Antisemitism, and Palestinian Media Watch. We are truly thrilled to have the support of so many important organizations which are in the fight against antisemitism, battling Jew hatred on the front line, and of course, supporting Israel with great love and commitment. People that are hesitant about expressing support for Israel need reach out to any of our many sponsors, get more information and be informed, stand up for Judaism and Zionism, become active in a local NGO or just support CAF's efforts by acting on our call to write to politicians, letters to news outlets that we publish and repeat lies, Sign petitions such as the one we posted with regard to the sponsorship from the Canadian Member of Parliament, Melissa Lansman, calling for a full public inquiry into the federal government's funding of the Canadian Media Advocacy Centre, which was established and operated by the vicious Jew hater, Laith Marouf. Canadians, no matter where you live, where you stand politically, you cannot afford to ignore that there were years of government funding of anti-Semitism couched in an all racist, anti-racist rhetoric. You cannot afford to ignore the recent letter of deception and lies published by the leader of the New Democrat Party, which calls for everything from defunding the military of Israel to charging Israel in the International Criminal Court for the unfortunate accident that led to the death of an Arab journalist. The list of 13 policy statements reflects the agenda of major anti-Israel organizations that are bent on destroying the only Jewish state in the world. This is anti-Semitism taken mainstream. This is the partner party of our current government, which holds the balance of power and is now calling on the federal liberals to adopt this insanely biased package of lies. Ronald Reagan once stated, that fascism would come from liberalism. And today we are seeing it played out. Jews must take a stand, must not be cowed, must not be silent, submissive, nor complicit in our own demise. It couldn't happen in culture Germany, right? In the 30s and 40s, and it can't happen in Canada, right? The fact that several arms of government provided hundreds of thousands of dollars to one malicious Jew hater who spread his poison across this country for years should wake everyone up to the possibility that things can get worse if we stay ignorant of the growing and normalized anti-Semitism around us. Where is all this hatred coming from? Can it be countered, even prevented? 
What are the characteristics, methodologies, and the goals of today's urge, surging anti-Semitism? Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch is an international law expert who specializes in the prosecution of terrorists and in the Palestinian Authority and the law applied in Judea and Samaria. Born in South Africa, educated in the United Kingdom, Maurice Hirsch completed his law degree and then made Aliyah. He served in the IDF in a number of senior positions, including in the Military Advocate General's Corps as assistant to the legal advisor to Judea and Samaria, head of legal advice to the Navy, Air Force, Ground Forces, and Home Front, and ultimately as the head of the military prosecution for Judea and Samaria. He served in the IDF for 19 years, retiring at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. During his military service, Maurice Hirsch dealt extensively with different aspects of Palestinian terrorism and led a number of initiatives that were focused on battling this phenomenon. In an unusual incident, he represented the IDF and the State of Israel in talks with the UN organization that had released a particularly controversial report. Hirsch's efforts were recognized as a great success and a further report that was put out by that organization was more balanced. Since retiring from the IDF, Maurice has been the head of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch, an organization that I highly recommend to all of you. If you are not signed up to receive their regular missives, I urge you to do so. It, it will shock you actually to see what the PA are doing. He is a senior member of Israel's Defense and Security Forum, Abitan Istim, and a research fellow for the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies and represents victims of terror while also actively promoting anti-terror legislation. It is my esteemed pleasure to call on Maurice Hirsch to address the topic, the Palestinian Authority is the source of global anti-Semitism, after which you will answer questions from the audience. I would ask that you put your questions in the Q&A box on your Zoom screen. You may use the chat function, but please put questions in Q&A and please be respectful with your comments. Thank you and welcome, Maurice. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, welcome, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you may be around the globe. Um, what I'm gonna do is really an introduction to everything I'm gonna say tonight. Um, it, it, are things that can be quoted, they can be found on, on, our, on our website, on Palestinian Media Watch's website, um, and it's freely available information, which is why I believe that the information is so important, um, because it's freely available. You don't have to be an intelligence specialist. You don't have to have secret sources. All you have to do is listen and read what the Palestinians, Palestinians are saying. So without further ado, I'm just gonna uh, share my screen if I may. And, uh, um, and we can start. Okay, so uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone, again, uh, good evening. Let's uh, uh, um, get straight into it. The Palestinian Authority is the source of global anti-Semitism. I already saw one of the quotes in the, in the chat box as to why I think that that's the case. Why are they the source of global uh, uh, anti-Semitism? I will walk through that as we go along. Um, that was the only uh, uh, comment that I saw in the meantime, but I'll try and address it as we go along, as I said. Um, so let's start. We have to put a few basics just so that we get everyone to a, a, a certain level of understanding of what we're about to talk about. Palestinian Authority. Palestinian Authority established in 1993 as part of the Oslo Accords. Um, nothing Palestinian like this existed prior to the Oslo Accords. Um, before that, there were Arabs living in Judea and Samaria, living in Gaza, um, some of them called themselves Palestinians at some stage or another, some of them didn't. Um, some of them at some stages in history called themselves Jordanians. And, and so what we're talking about really is from 1993 onwards and this development from the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority, we have to understand, is, is dominated by the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, um, background set up in 1965 to liberate what was then Palestine, what they saw as Palestine, obviously by the date you understand 1965, doesn't talk about liberating Judea and Samaria. They were not under Israel's control yet. So they were there to liberate the rest of Palestine, which is Israel. The one party that dominates uh, uh, the PLO, even though the PLO 
is a conglomerate of all different parties. The one party that dominates the, the PLO is Fatah. Fatah is really, or the PLO is really synonymous with, the, uh, with Fatah. And the PLO Fatah have controlled the, um, the, um, the Palestinian Authority since it was established at one stage at the beginning through election, and then really for the last 15 to 18 years, simply by, um, by a, a dictatorship and, uh, and, and, and as part of inertia. What I'm going to talk about as part of, uh, uh, um, what I'm going to show you really as part of the presentation are clips from the Palestinian official media. Now, why do I put it in, in inverted commas? Because this is something which to most people, definitely Westerners, is an entirely foreign concept. What does it mean, official media? What does that mean? In, 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 in this day and age of the internet and of free press, you have 10 different newspapers in every local area and 15 different satellite channels on, the, on television and radio. What does it mean in this day and age to have an official media? So, so let me just stop from that question for a second and give a quick answer. In the, in the Palestinian Authority, they have their official mouthpieces. It's somewhere equivalent to Pravda of, uh, uh, um, of, 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 of the USSR or of Der Spiegel uh, uh, um, of, of, of the Nazis. It's, it's something which conveys a message which, if they don't want that message conveyed to their public, if they don't want that message in the media, it stops. We have videos on our site, on Palestinian Media Watch's site, that, for example, where they have a live uh, um, uh, uh, show and people are being asked questions, and some of the Palestinians asking the questions are far too critical of the Palestinian Authority, and suddenly they have technical difficulties. When they come back and they get over their technical technical difficulties, you hear nothing more of the critical content uh, uh, con uh, questions. In the official Palestinian TV, for example, you see zero criticism of the Palestinian Authority, of Mahmoud Abbas, of Fatah, of the PLO. Everything is there to support them. So when you have that messaging, when you have that level of control of the media, we at Palestinian Media Watch follow them because we understand that the messages that they want to give over to their people are really the messages that appear in that official media. So we look at the official media of uh, the Palestinian Authority, and we also look at social media of Fatah, the PLO, um, in order to understand what really Fatah equals PLO equals PA is trying to say um, to the Palestinian people. So let's, uh, uh, um, on that, let's move on. Palestinian media, so what do we do? We, we, we sit there, we literally have a staff that sits and reads the newspapers of the Palestinian Authority, reads, uh, 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 listens to the radio, watches their television stations, and, and sifts through um, their, uh, their, their social media. And, and we look at everything because there can be different uh, uh, aspects of every different subject in what we're talking about, sports. How do you use sports in order to convey a message? Sports could be something which is particularly positive. Sports, the idea of the Olympics, it brings people together. But when you're Jibril Rajoub, when you're at the head of the, the, the sports uh, uh, branch of the Palestinian Authority, then your position is very clear. There will be no normalization in sports. There will be no contact in sports. Everything that Israel does in sports is evil. On the other hand, the sports, message, the sports events are used in order to convey those same messages. We look at crossword puzzles. We have a, 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 one, a, a, one of our staff is, is, is really quite phenomenal at doing the, uh, at understanding and, uh, uh, um, uh, and getting through the, the, the crossword puzzles of the Palestinian uh, media. And to understand when you have in Hebrew, obviously, or, or in Arabic, when it comes out, a four letter word that describes the mountain, the, the, the city that's on the mountain range overlooking uh, um, the Mediterranean. When you understand by the bay, obviously, when, when you understand that that's Haifa, you understand that that's, well, that's not really a Palestinian city, that's really an Israeli city. So how does that play in? Children's pages are, are something which are, um, are, are also a very uh, um, important for us. Um, so the other part of the equation is what is anti-Semitic? Now, I'm gonna cut through this very, very quickly. Um, I apologize because I would imagine that we could hold a symposium on that question of what is anti-Semitism 
for, for several hours and still um, come back for more. So I'm just gonna put up a screen, which you should never have in a presentation, which is why I don't want anyone to read it, but you're gonna see it anyway. It's this one. These are the, these are the manifestations of anti-Semitism included in the, in the IHRA um, definition of anti-Semitism. I'm gonna use that just as the basic. It's been more and more accepted around the world. It has really the, 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 the basics, the core issues of what is anti-Semitism, whether it be on one side calling to murder Jews, whether it be on the other side denying the Holocaust, the Jews invented the Holocaust, um, denying Jews their right to self-determination, um, claiming that the existence of Israel is, an, is, a, is, is in and of itself a racist endeavor. So, so we're going to use that a little bit as, as our guiding uh, uh, um, tool for the idea of anti-Semitism. But before we, uh, um, we get on to, to, to any of that, really, we're going to just start with the basics of anti-Semitism, right? Jews are the source of all evil in the world. That's, that's the clearest message. And let's watch this message on uh, um, how it plays out on Palestinian television. Um, we're talking about a sermon given by a preacher on Palestinian uh, um, television. Again, what we have to understand is that if the Palestinian Authority doesn't want the population to hear the message, the, 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 the broadcast goes dead. This is a message that the Palestinian Authority wants the Palestinian people to hear. Let's hear this guy. It's unbelievable. If you want to read the, the, the blue at the same time, we'll discuss. <laughs> ولا بالبركة ولا بهداءة البال ولا براحة الحال وما زال هؤلاء المفسدون في الأرض حتى قال لي أحد كبير Humanity will never live in peace as long as there's Jews Now listen to this message لو أن سمكة تقاتلت مع سمكة في البحر If a fish in the sea fights with another fish I'm sure the Jews are behind it. Now, that's just an unbelievable statement because that is really the essence of Jew hatred. Jews are responsible for everything. Jews are responsible for all of the evil in the world. Now, this guy, Imad Khamato, what do you do with him? If you're Mahmoud Abbas and you've got this crazed, rabid preacher who's saying that if a fish in the sea fights another fish, the Jews are responsible for it. What do you do with him? So Mahmoud Abbas's response was to appoint him the head of the Azahar uh, um, um, uh, educational system in Gaza, promote him, be, give him the position of educating the next uh, uh, um, generation. So that's very uh, a very simple idea. Let's uh, look, let's see it a little bit in images. Um, obviously, you can see the image itself. Sunni and uh, uh, um, and Shia, the two Muslim factions fighting each other. And obviously they can't be responsible for that because there's Muslim unity. Who's responsible? The hook knows Jew. I, I, I think that you could probably have taken this straight out of Nazi propaganda and no one would even have been surprised had you seen this as part of uh, uh, um, the preparation for the final uh, 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 solution, uh, as they called it, for the murder of, uh, of, of the Jews. Now. The next one is also, it's a, it's a crazy event. If you remember a few years ago, there was a, a, a terrorist attack um, in, in France. ISIS are responsible. Who's holding, who's holding the barrel of the gun? Then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Because it can't be that ISIS crazed terrorists are just acting against the infidels because that's what they do. It has to be that Israel and the Jews are somewhere involved in that. Now, it has to be stressed that this is the Jews. This isn't Israel. This isn't something which is necessarily only focused on the idea of, well, Israel was behind it. Benjamin Netanyahu isn't wearing the Israeli flag. He's wearing the Jewish star. That is the idea of the yellow star that the Nazis made the Jews wear. That's the analogy. Now, look, now if, we, if we get on to, to this guy, have to understand also who these people are to understand this also isn't just another crazy preacher. Um, this is Mahmoud El Abash. He is the most senior Islamic source in the Palestinian Authority. He is Mahmoud Abbas's 
special advisor. Um, he has a very clear message for us. Um, هذا الصراع المحتدم ها هنا في فلسطين بيننا وبين هذا الاحتلال المجرم صور صورة أخرى من صور الصراع التاريخي بين الحق والباطل بين الخير و... It's a conflict between truth and falsehood between good and evil This isn't territorial This isn't something which can be solved by, well, Israel will pull back a few meters here, the Palestinians will give up something there. This is the message of the most senior uh, um, Islamic authority. It's a, it's a fight between good and evil. On the time of the history, there was a fight between good and evil. The good is the people and the people of the people. And the evil is the people of the people of the people. We are the devils, by the way, for anyone who didn't understand. Israel, the Jews are the devils, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the Muslims being uh, the supporters of the... ...abalis, al-shayateen wa atba'u al-shayateen. Wa nahnu ha huna isna bid'an min al-amr. Huwa sira'un bayna haqiqatayn, haqiqat al-khayri wa haqiqat al-shar. Bayna mashru'ayn, mashru'i al-rahmani wa mashru'i al-shaytan. Allah's project, which is the destruction of Israel, and Satan's project, which is Israel itself. This is the message of simple, undiluted, really, just Jew hatred that, that I think is very clear for, for anyone uh, um, to see. Now let's go back to a little bit to the, to the, the, the IHRA uh, uh, definition, and, and we'll see one of them. Calling or aiding or justifying uh, um, the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or extremist uh, um, view of religion. So... Here we have to understand that uh, uh, um, part of the ideology of the Palestinian Authority to its population is that it's a good thing to die for Islam. It's a good thing to be a martyr. A martyr in Islam is the highest level that you can reach. And therefore, it's seen to be something positive that you are a martyr. So you can understand when you have this messaging and it's put out to, to the adults, adults participate in terrorism. That's what you understand. That is uh, uh, the clear thing. The PA takes this to a whole different level. Listen to this. This is a little girl who's telling a story. You have to, I, I'm going to play the video in a, in a second. Listen to the, really to the, to the pathos of, 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 of her telling the story. This is, you can see by the picture, she's not a, she's not a teenager. We're probably talking about eight-year-old, nine-year-old who's managed to, 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 to learn this text. And she's now giving over the story. Um, listen to what she has to say. Uh, Just let that little uh, uh, part of the story settle in for just a, a, a little bit. Imagine a parent telling their child, child, you're not created for happiness. You are created to die. And what do you have to do to die? It's not just die. It's not just, obviously, it's not going to commit suicide. You have to go and die while you're killing the Jews. This is something which is fundamental. That is part of the daily education. I, mean, I, I, I only have, I understood from Andrea that I only have about three and a half hours for this lecture. Um, so only joking. It's not going to be that long. But but I'm, I'm, I'm only giving you a few very, very small tasters of what we have. Um, on our website, um, this idea of sending children to martyrdom, persuading them that they have no right to live uh, and, and, no, and no business living. They're just a weapon in the hands of Islam and that are meant to die ammunition. Um, that is something which is, is hard to understand. But when you're calling in that way for them to go out and kill, that is anti-Semitism when you're prepared 
as Golda Meir famously said, there'll be peace here when the Palestinians love their children more than they want to kill us. Um, and, and that's still a truism. So, and then you add into it uh, um, this idea of, of pay for slay. I hope that you've all heard of the idea of pay for slay. It's the Palestinian salaries, Palestinian authority salaries that they pay to every terrorist that goes into prison um, for being part of uh, um, the fight against the occupation, for being responsible for killing Jews, obviously, as part of the equation. Um, you get a salary. The salaries are, for the most part, higher than the salaries you would earn in, a, in, a, in any decent profession. So it really pays to be involved in terrorism. Um, you go into prison, you make your money, um, you come out, suddenly you're rich, and it's, and it's all good. We have, uh, um, obviously, from my previous position as, as head of the prosecution, um, we have and, and, and we've seen evidence of terrorists who explain that they went and carried out terrorist attacks and planned terrorist attacks as a means to get money, as a means to get rich. Um, not all of it is ideological. In fact, probably most of it isn't ideological when you have this idea of getting rich and you then become a hero in your village, a hero in your town, um, and adulated by the Palestinian population. That's part of the equation. And if you don't go to prison and you die, then your family gets a, a, a monthly payment um, from the Palestinian Authority. Just to put these uh, uh, numbers into a little bit of context, if you are a genuinely needy Palestinian uh, uh, family, and there are not a small amount of them, you get in the region of 600 to 750 shekels a month as welfare. If you send a child to die because they're destined for martyrdom, then you get 1,400 shekel a month from the Palestinian Authority. Terrorism and murder simply pays what, uh, um, in the Palestinian Authority. That's uh, um, the idea. Now, why do I say this is a source of global anti-Semitism? Because this is a project for the Palestinian Authority to the Palestinian people. It's designed at um, incentivizing and rewarding terrorism. So I would argue that it is anti-Semitism, and this is a source of global anti-Semitism because of the reaction of the world. The world knows about pay for slay. The world has heard about pay for slay. The world has seen examples of Palestinian terrorists who have been paid vast sums of money as a reward for terrorism, as a reward for murdering Jews. The world has not said to the Palestinian Authority, this is disgusting, this is abominable. You will not receive any funding from any source whatsoever until you abolish this program. In fact, what we saw at the beginning, for example, at the beginning of the Biden administration um, was, well, we'll enter into discussions with the Palestinian Authority in order to try and reform the system. We'll try and make it a needs-based system. That isn't an answer. These people are not needy people. I have from my own experience, and we also have empirical studies, uh, um, figures from Israel's prison uh, service, 70% of the terrorists in jail are single. They don't have families to support. They weren't single blood uh, uh, um, breadwinners before. Not every one of the terrorists who died was ever the single uh, breadwinner of the family. So these rewards are simply a reward for terrorism. The world knows about it. And the world is not only convinced by the lie of the Palestinian Authority that this is welfare, but also goes along with and indirectly funds this whole program. They say that we're not going to give money for paper slate. We're giving it to specific sources, but money is fungible. And once money is fungible, any aid that you give to the Palestinian Authority allows them to use their own money in order to, uh, um, to fund their paper slate. Let's get off that. Like I said, little taster. Now let's get on to a little bit of denying the Holocaust. Denying the Holocaust is probably one of the uh, um, the uh, most foul uh, uh, um, things that we have in the Palestinian Authority. Um, this is a what I'm about to show you is a Fatah video. It is rewriting history that is just so vile. I'll read carefully. 
if uh, I'll try and, uh, and make sure that it goes, it's slow enough that you'll see uh, uh, everything they're saying. The general idea is just horrible. هناك في أوروبا يقيم القوم مخيماتهم وأماكن سكناهم جيتوهات ضيقة تبنى أعمدتها على الانفكاك عن The Jews set up their own ghettos to separate themselves off from other people. We put ourselves into the Warsaw Ghetto. البشر غرورا وشمئزازا من أغيار لا يبتقون إلى مكانتهم من أناس هم أفاع أبناء أفاع حسب رؤيتهم هناك in the ghettos, the Jews scheme to exploit the other's material and human resources. That's what we were doing in every one of the ghettos, according to Fatah, according to the... Just let that screen sink in for a little bit. The Jews were hated because of their racism and their filthy behavior. That's why six million Jews were murdered by the Nazis, because they were racists and their filthy behavior. <laughs> And here we have it. Zionism was born out of the womb of exploitation. Zionism didn't exist uh, um, before the Holocaust. It was a result of the Holocaust, and it was there from the exploitation of Jews, of other of Jews by other Jews. Um, that's the message. This guy goes on and on and on. It's just foul in all of its uh, uh, um, uh, content. You can watch the whole video at, a, at, at another time, um, but I must move on. Um, just some of the, 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 the ideas that come up. Um, the Jewish tribe led the project to enslave humanity. That's what we were doing during the Holocaust. Um, we own, uh, uh, Jews were hated because of their filthy behavior. 70 years have passed since the artificial state establishment. They have not removed from their consciousness the other as inferior. Obviously the idea that's going around now of Jewish superiority, and um, where does it come from as a result of the Holocaust? It doesn't only come from here, but this is a message that is echoed time and time again um, by the Palestinian Authority uh, to its people, and from there also outwards to every Fatah uh, uh, branch. Now, drawing comparisons, uh, one of the other definitions of, 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 of anti-Semitism, according to the IHRA definition, is drawing comparisons um, of contemporary Israel policy to that of the Nazis. Here we have it over and over again. Um, the Israel, sorry, excuse me, Israel has committed, a, 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 um, has repeated a Kristallnacht. This is what, these two quotes are from last year. Uh, uh, um, while uh, the first one was while the, the war was going on with Gaza, while they were shooting over thousands of missiles and the Israeli Arabs uh, um, were also rioting. Um, and their claim was that Israel had committed another uh, a repeated Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht, I'm sure you all recognize uh, the term uh, uh, the night uh, uh, that the Germans went around and destroyed all of the, uh, uh, or, or very many of, uh, 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 of the shuls uh, in Germany uh, uh, in, in, in 1938. Um, and, uh, um, and you see that theme of well, what the Germans did, this is what Israel's doing, um, uh, a previous quote, the racist colonialist occupation system uh, um, has detention camps that are similar to Nazi crematoriums. Like comparing Israel's prison system, which in most accounts is pretty much equivalent to a five-star prison system. Um, prisoners go in, they learn, they get paid, they are fed, obviously, they get degrees. Um, the Palestinian Authority says that at any one time, any one given time, there's somewhere between six to eight hundred Palestinian terrorists learning for academic degrees while in prison and yet the the comparison is to the detention camps and to the crematoriums um, of, 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 of Auschwitz. Now how do we know that that really uh, uh, um, filters through and filters out 
to the rest of the world um, in its messaging. A, a very simple quote uh, from, from Twitter just a few days ago. One in three Germans say Israeli apartheid treating Palestinians like Nazis did the Jews. We see that messaging. Palestinians saying, Palestinian authorities saying that what Israel's doing to the Jew, to the Palestinians is what the Nazis did. And we see that message spreading out across the globe and then being interpreted by uh, the different people who are hearing it, not only Palestinians, but in this case, uh, uh, Germans. Um, and we go on. And, and so now the next part of really of, of anti-Semitism is, is invest, inventing new slash old libels. We've always had the blood libels um, that are going on, Jews uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that we know from, from really from, from possibly from, from more from Christendom of, of Jews killing uh, uh, Christian babies to make their matzahs for Pesach and, and things like that. But for the Palestinians, it's a little bit more refined, um, but, but also very easy. Jews kill Palestinians just because they're Palestinians. Let's have a look at a, 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 um, a, um, at, a, at, at, at just one very, just one case, really a very, very uh, simple case study um, that we can uh, use. Again, if you go to the site of Palestinian Media Watch uh, and powerwatch.org, you'll, you'll, you'll find dozens of, of, of other uh, um, instances and examples um, very similar. Here we have a, a report. You can see the Palestinian uh, a kid lying on the floor, uh, Zuhadi al-Tawil. Um, he was shot by the occupation forces and died as a martyr. Here we see that same, that same term coming up again. Children are there to be martyrs. He died as a martyr. Fabulous. Local sources said that the martyr is an outstanding high school student in the sciences track. Now, when you read this and when you hear this messaging, what is the picture that you've already conjured up in your mind? That Israel is evil. Israel just arbitrarily kills 17-year-old Palestinian kids that are, that are excellent students. Let's look, look at it also here on, 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 the, on, on the news report, not only in, 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 in the written uh, media, um, but here also on social media. اليوم شرطة الاحتلال قتلت شاب في مقتبل العمر بحجة تنفيذ عملية طعن وهي الحجة التي تستخدمها في كل مرة في المقابل تسهل حياة المستوطنين في. While the, while obviously all the settlers are, are rioting, well, where were the settlers rioting? That's a whole different subject which I'll uh, touch a little bit upon uh, later. عربدتهم على الفلسطينيين في عربدتهم على أبناء شعبنا. Now, just I apologize for the next video that you're about to see. Well, so this is the real story. What did Zohil do? He stabbed an Israeli soldier in the back. Here we can see the Israeli soldier still miraculous, miraculously, really, on his feet, with the knife still sticking out of his back. Now. Just remember the picture that we conjured up previously. This great student, 17 years old, died as a martyr when arbitrarily killed by the occupation forces. And this is reality. Now, how does that become anti-Semitism? Because I saw that also, uh, uh, the incident that And uh, Andrea mentioned at the beginning, um, in a report of uh, UNICEF, the UN Children's Organization, Israel arbitrarily uh, uh, kills Palestinian children. Israel arbitrarily arrests Palestinian children and puts them on trial. We don't give them their rights. And, and then we just throw them into prison for no good reason. It couldn't possibly be that Palestinian children are involved in terror. That possibly couldn't be the answer. Um, that was the uh, uh, UNICEF's report of 2013. Their conclusion was that Israel, when it prosecutes terrorist murderers like Morada Dais, a 17-year-old that stabbed Daphne Meir over and over and over again until, again, I apologize for the graphic uh, uh, description, till the knife got embedded in her skull. He then went home, watched, washed his hands, and sat down and watched a film with his family. That, when you prosecuted him because he was a minor, for UNICEF was a crime against humanity, nothing short of that. This is the message of the Palestinian Authority seeping through and feeding into even UN reports that use these as the basis to, to then say that Israel is committing crimes against humanity, Auschwitz, death camps, 
and prosecuting minors who murder Jews. That's a, a, the same thing. Now, obviously, this is something which we have to touch on. The Jews are planning to destroy Al-Aqsa. This is a major theme within Palestinian society. Um, this is spread out across the world where you see that, that communities around the world are rising up as the Jews are trying to destroy Al-Aqsa. Um, and it comes out in different ways. Let's have a look at a few of them. Firstly, you have to teach the children. Jews are just trying to destroy Al-Aqsa. This is a seventh grade school book. Um, the picture is very clear. What do you then, you don't just leave the children with the picture to, to, to say, well, that looks interesting. You ask them about, well, what do you think the illustrator was trying to convey in the message? You see, obviously, the, the Jewish star Israel underneath the golden uh, uh, dome. Everything is Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa mosque really is a smaller or, or a very small relatively uh, building on the southern side of the mountain. The, gold, the, the, the Golden Dome isn't a mosque at all, but they refer to the entire compound as the Al-Aqsa Mosque, because that's the only way that they can possibly justify that, that uh, um, the Jews are trying to destroy this, this whole area. Um, in 1969, if you remember, um, there was a, 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 an Australian Christian who decided that he was going to take it upon himself um, to... Uh, um, to, to, to really burn down Al-Aqsa. He took a petrol bomb, threw it in. This is how, it was the anniversary of that event recently, listen how uh, um, Palestinian television describes the event. هذا وتوافق اليوم الذكرى الثالثة والخمسون لإحراق المسجد الأقصى المبارك ففي مثل هذا اليوم من عام تسعة وستين An extremist Jew. He wasn't a Jew. With Australian citizens, he wasn't Jewish. So once you've already got that idea in there of an extremist Jew, let's go back to one of the definitions of the IHRA. It's not only accusing Jews of doing something or, or taking responsibility for something that, that one Jew did. Here, the Jews are responsible for something that a Christian did. No connection to Judaism. اقتحم يهودي متطرف استرالي الجنسية إرهابي يدعى دينيس روهان المسجد الأقصى وأشعل نيران عمدا في الجناح الشرقي للمسجد الأقصى المبارك ثلاثة وخمسون عاما على جريمة إحراق المسجد الأقصى المبارك في أغسطس عام تسعة وستين التي نفذها مصر the extremist settler. Now, the, 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 the Australian Christian isn't only a, a Jewish, he isn't only an extremist, but now he's also a settler. Obviously, he lives in Judean Samaria in 1969, and he was Jewish, but let's put aside the fact that there really weren't settlements at, at, at that time. Um, they hadn't yet started to grow, and he was Christian, but why let the truth uh, uh, spoil a good مستوطن متطرف أسترالي الجنسية إرهابي يدعى مايكل دينيس روهان الذي أشعل النيران عمدا. He deliberately set fire to the Al-Aqsa Mosque because the Jews and also Christians that have nothing to do with the Jews are obviously trying uh, um, to destroy the mosque. Um, now it, it, it's also much, much clearer a, a messaging that comes through. The Jews threaten the Muslim and Christian holy sites, while the PA is the defender of all. Now, where does suddenly the Christian holy sites come in? What has the PA got to do with Christian holy sites? You might ask that question. Nothing whatsoever. Did, did the Palestinians ever have any type of control of the Christian uh, uh, holy sites? Absolutely not. We know there was never such an, inst uh, 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 um, an entity that a Palestinian entity that was in charge of, of, of the mosques, the British, the, the Ottomans before them, the Jordanians illegally from 1948 to 1967. But it's the Jews that are threatening not only uh, um, the, uh, um, the, the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but also threatening all of uh, um, the Christian side. Let's see it here again as a, really, the, this is a mix of everything. We're Nazis. We're trying to destroy everything. We're Aryans. This is a great one. Israel على الحرب الدينية على الإسلام والمسيحية في نفس الوقت. 
Israel declared a religious war against Islam and Christianity. Like, I must have missed that. I was probably sleeping last night for those four hours that I do sleep a night, and I missed the declaration of war because I don't think anyone could actually say that that statement is in any time. Uh, uh, <laughs> The Jews are the Aryans. So not only are we racist, not only are we uh, uh, declaring war on Christianity, and obviously not only the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but also the Holy Sepulchre, um, the, the big church also in the old city. I'm sure everybody knows it. If not, fourth century church uh, being around, it's the, it covers the resting place uh, um, of, of, of Jesus and, and where he would then uh, arise and, and be resurrected. Um, it's 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 an important uh, uh, obviously obviously church and uh, uh, um, and the Jews are trying to destroy it. Doesn't matter that we've been in charge. We've we've been un, in control of of the entire old city. It's in Jerusalem's old city for the last fifty four years, and nothing's happened to the church. Nothing's happened to the Temple Mount. Nothing's happened to Al Aqsa. We don't let any of the truth spoil a good story. Then you have, uh, um, just to make sure that we understand, it's not just uh, these preachers, it's not just odd people. We have uh, Mahmoud Abbas feigning any type of interest in, in, in the health of the, of the Pope, but really he's there to say that, don't worry, Mr. Pope, we Palestinians are there to, uh, uh, um, to, to stop the attacks on, Christi on Christian and Islamic holy sites, um, that, and that, that, that these Jews are carrying out um, when he does it, uh, uh, when he speaks to the uh, the the, uh, uh, the Greek uh, uh, the Greek patriarch, he's much more obviously much more uh, uh, explicit, much more uh, um, uh, clear in his message. This is the message. Take into account Israel. It's just background again. I have to uh, give it. Israel created in 1948. At the time, there's 1,000 uh, um, Israeli Arabs. There are now some two million uh, um, Israeli Arabs uh, living in Israel. Um, the Christian population in Israel is the only Christian population in the Middle East that is growing, and yet the Zionist goal is emptying this land of its Christians and Muslims, says Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, to the Greek patriot. To the to the Greek patriarch, we will. But don't worry. He reassures, we will remain in this land forever while the Jews have no place in Jerusalem and, interestingly, no place here. Well, what does that mean? And the answer is very simple. Jews in the ideology of Mahmoud Abbas have no place whatsoever in Israel at all. Israel does not have any right to exist. Now, that obviously leads us into the next part of the definition denying the Jewish people the right to self-determination, claiming that the existence of Israel is a racist endeavor. We already saw that with uh, Mahmoud Abbas. Now we have uh, 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 Jibril Rajoub. Now, again, why do I say that these messages and the PA is the source of global anti-Semitism? Because you have instances in which when you hear a, when you hear such a, violently anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish message being put out, you have the opportunity as a Western diplomat to stand up and say, you know what, that's not going to happen. The German Chancellor had that opportunity a few days ago, a few weeks ago, when Mahmoud Abbas uh, um, stood next to him at a press conference and said, Israel has committed 50 holocausts. So I didn't bring that here because Schloss actually uh, went out afterwards and he condemned the, the statement. Here we have European diplomats at the launching of the Palestine Marathon. Palestinian Authority have a, mar have a marathon. Here we have Jibril Rajoub, the head of sports, as we said. Um, he's giving over the message. And you can use sports to increase peace. You can bring up about, about the, the Islamic spirit, uh, the, the Olympic spirit. But no, what's Jibril Rajoub's message on the day of the marathon? The time has come to confront the fascist racist occupation. What's that got to do with people running? The, 
Time has come to the end the expressions of ethnic cleansing. This is a theme that you see all over in every UN report and in every uh, uh, um, report of these so-called human rights organizations. There's ethnic cleansing going on. Um, read one of Palestinian authorities' uh, um, latest reports we gave. Um, the numbers of how the Palestinian or, uh, 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 population in the last, really, 25 years of, of the Oslo report, 27 years, has grown immensely, millions of people. In every single area of, in every single district of the Palestinian Authority, according to their own numbers, there has been a population explosion. And yet when Jibril Rajub talks to the international community, he talks about, and I'm sure that every single one of you have heard this idea, that there's ethnic cleansing going on. In Masafariata is the, is the new Celeb idea, uh, uh, um, uh, um, location. There's ethnic cleansing going on there because Bedouins are being taken out of a firing zone into which they illegally trespassed. I had someone contact me recently said, but, but how can Israel be doing this? Well, they have no background there. That was proved in court over and over again that these people were just trespassers. But for Jibril Rajub, there's ethnic cleansing of the fascist, racist, Zion, the ugly face of, 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 of Nazism, which is this Zionism, that simple equation of the Jews. Now, the next, the next video I'm going to show you is, is why you can get to that conclusion, because Jews really have no history here. But the history that they do have here was carefully planned in order to ensure that we disinherit the Palestinians, and we've been planning it, according to the Palestinian Authority, for 180 years. 180 years we've been planning uh, um, that takeover. Let's uh, uh, listen to it. الهجرة غير الشرعية لليهود إلى فلسطين تعود بدايات الهجرة The illegal immigration of the Jews to Palestine started in 1837. It's not a typo. 1837. Then it was illegal under the, under the Ottomans. Well, no, it wasn't. But again, why let truth? غير الشرعية إلى فلسطين منذ عام 1837 وهو ما يوضح حجم المؤامرة التاريخية على فلسطين منذ عقود طويلة سبقت النكبة سنة 1948 توالت الهجرات اليهودية على أرض فلسطين ضمن مخطط صهيوني استعماري قادته الدول As part of a Zionist uh, uh, colonial project um, led by the world powers this is the way to describe the San Remo uh, declaration, and, and then the League of Nations saying Israel recognizing the Jewish people's historic collection, connection to the land of Israel and their right to reconstitute their national homeland. It's just a Zionist plot from 180 years ago. Um, and how do we know that that comes out and plays out? Because we have people like Mark Lamont, this generation of activists BLM saying, no, and let's saying, defund. What's their no, no, let's abolish. Let's imagine new possibilities. And one of the new possibilities that they've imagined um, is, an, is a world where that, that is anti-imperialist. They don't want to just nation build, but they want a world make. Well, Jews are the imperialists that we came over, we colonized. And therefore, what do you need to do? Mark Lamont. And so Black Lives Matter very explicitly is talking about the dismantling of... Um, of, of, of a Zionist project, dismantle. Dismantle the Zionist project, because Jews don't have a right to self-definition, de uh, uh, determination, as we said, the, the, the definition says. Um, we have to dismantle the Zionist project, because the Zionist project is colonialist in its nature. There is no Jewish history um, in the land of Israel. The, the League of Nations in 1922 were simply reinventing what didn't exist. Um, the occupied Palestinian territories. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, uh, blend of three words that I'm sure that every single one of you has heard before and recognizes well immediately what's being discussed. We're talking about obviously Judea and Samaria, Gaza. They are the occupied Palestinian territories. Ask yourself a very, very simple question. When did that term come about? When did Judea, Samaria, and Gaza become 
occupied Palestinian territory. Were they occupied Palestinian territories under the Ottomans for 400 years? Apparently not. Were they occupied Palestinian territories under the British and the mandate from the League of Nations? Apparently not. Were they occupied Palestinian territories under the Jordanians and the Egyptians, 1948 to 1967? Apparently not, because they, were, they weren't occupied by Israel. So if you follow that through, if they were just Palestinian territories, then that's where the Palestinians would have set up their national homeland. But they didn't. They became occupied Palestinian territories only in the late 90s after the creation of the Palestinian Authority. If you read the UN resolutions, read resolution 242, for example, the resolution 2nd of November uh, 1967, five months after the end of the Six Day War, it doesn't mention Palestinian territory. And as a lawyer, I say to everyone, a lawyer reads not only what the document has and says, but also what it doesn't say. In nowhere in resolution, UN Security Rat Council Resolution 242, will you hear the word Palestinian? It's a term that didn't exist. It has only become part of such clear conversation and as a means to castigate Israel since the establishment of the Palestinian Authority, because they, if they're an authority and they're a national people, then they have to have a land. And if they have to have a land, well, what's their land? So let's call it the Palestinian uh, uh, Authority. I, I, one of my favorite films in the world uh, um, really is, is, is The Usual Suspects. And I love this uh, quote. I apologize if people haven't seen the film. It's uh, the devil is working behind the scenes, pulling all the types of strings. And, uh, uh, um, and, and really one of the, the closing scenes of the film is how the devil gets away. And he says, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. The greatest trick, really, that the Palestinians have, uh, 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 have pulled is to convince the world that there was once a Palestine. And this is what Palestine looks like. This is historical Palestine. It's all of Israel. This is what the Palestinian Authority teaches its children, teaches its adults. Thousands of maps like this all over the PA. This is from a summer camp. You have two very, uh, uh, um, very specific ideas there. The map of all of Palestine, that's what we're going back to. And the key, which is a sign of the Palestinian refugees. Now, how does that play into really a, a, a charm that every single one of you have heard? But you need to see where it comes from. It's this one. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. We know that it's there. I have to admit that it does, to a, an extent, predate the Palestinian Authority. For those that don't recognize the picture, this is Laila Khalid, um, the, uh, um, the, the, the terrorist hijacker. She's from the PFLP, right? The Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine for the Palestinians, which is why, again, I say this is part of this idea of global uh, um, anti-Semitism and promoting it. The PFLP is, a, is an internationally recognized terrorist organization. For the Palestinian Authority, they're just another Palestinian faction. They are a faction within the PLO. The PLO is the guiding force of the Palestinian Authority. Terrorists that promote this idea of from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And you see it again, Palestine tomorrow, I will be free. What Palestine? When you ask these people, well, when did this Palestine exist? When did Palestine exist? When historically was there a Palestinian entity that was only Jewish? There's a very, very famous uh, uh, video um, uh, um, on that you can find it on YouTube. Duff uh, uh, um, Golda Meir being in, interviewed by a, a British journalist in 1970, and she explained, well, "Well, when were the Palestinians invented? Were they invented as a result of the Six Day War? They were invented in 1967. When did they become a people?" We have uh, uh, on our site, Palestinian Media Watch, um, a video of a Palestinian uh, uh, historian, albeit unfrequently, but sometimes uh, they express uh, um, great clarity and honesty, saying that in 1917, Balfour Declaration, there wasn't such a thing as a Palestinian people. Um, 
the Palestinian uh, uh, entity has never existed. And so really the greatest uh, myth that the Palestinian Authority has managed to sell to the world um, is this myth that there was a Palestine. Palestine is all of Israel. That's when uh, that was their national homeland. Um, and that's what they should be. Um, I apologize for speaking for too long. Um, that's it. Wow. I told people it would be upsetting. It is very upsetting. It's unbelievable. So a couple of questions. And, and thank you for agreeing ahead of time that you'll hang in for a few minutes. We still have quite a few listeners. Um, I think the most important question that I've seen repeated is, what do we do about all of this? And why isn't Israel doing more? Or is it? What can it, what can it be doing? What is it doing? What can we be doing? Well, I, I think these are really different questions for, for everyone around the world. I think the answer is very simple. To take our material, take Palestinian Media Watch's material, and present it and show every politician that you can get to, every decision maker, that everyone should know the truth. We are a very small organization. Um, we, uh, uh, we operate based on donations only. Our ability and our reach is, is great but not, not great enough. And every single person listening could be an ambassador for this message. Take the materials. If you quote us, great. If you don't, that's also good. Get the message to as many people as possible. Educate as many people as possible because that's the way that you change it. Persuade your governments that by giving any type of support, in, in, in American law, it's called the material support, it's not only financial support, it's political support, it's diplomatic support to this really racist, anti-Semitic Palestinian authority. That is something which is bad. It's something which isn't promoting peace. While this messaging continues on, it guarantees a continuance of the conflict. It guarantees nothing that could be considered peaceful. And therefore, that needs to be the message. If you want peace, Israel wants peace, the Jews want peace, you cannot allow such rabid anti-Semitism to continue on, and you cannot fund it, support it, or give it diplomatic uh, uh, um, uh, uh, credence. I can add something that um, might help our listeners also. Um, our organization, CAF, produces something we call the End Jew Hatred Report once a month, and we draw heavily on the materials uh, Maurice, that you produce, that PMW produces, as well as uh, sometimes from uh, Memory, which is another organization tracking uh, the terrorist activities of the PEA, and uh, the Bedin Center for the Near East Policy Research. We take material, pick one theme, one idea, whether it is to stop funding UNRWA or to stop collaborating with the PA, and we send it to every elected member of parliament, provincial, territorial, and federal, and the senators. Amazing. So what I would um, tell people is that if you would like to use that and take it to your local politicians, that would be great. And it would be so much better to have people meet personally with their elected members. We're blasting it out. I can tell you we're getting very little response. Maybe they don't read it, maybe their staff deleted, but they're ignoring it, which is tragic. So if there's any way that people feel they can be, would like to be more action oriented, we'd be happy to share that and send it to everybody. And if you look at the list of our sponsors, which you'll see again at the end of this program, there are a lot of organizations trying to do good work and, and be involved. So if you're watching this and you're not yet connected, I would invite you and urge you to reach out to a local organization. I wanted to ask whether PMW and or the or the other organization you're heavily involved with, ISDF, have actually met with governments outside of Israel. Have you sought meetings with our elected people? Without question. Uh, um, Itamar Marcus, the founder of Palestinian Media Watch, is, is, is probably one of the most phenomenal people that I've met, a, a true visionary um, that is running around the world as much as possible, getting to as many parliaments as, as, as is possible. Um, into uh, as many meetings as possible um, uh, in Europe, in, 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 in North America, um, getting to Africa as well, uh, um, Australia. Really, uh, uh, um, he's been doing amazing, amazing work for so long, and, uh, 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 and he continues to do it. Um, and so, yes, we are also getting that message over as often as we can, as frequently as we can. If there are 
more people who can help us also with that message. We would uh, um, be happy to have any help and support um, that, that, that we can get as well. Um, Itamar uh, uh, um, really has uh, uh, um, nothing to do else in the world um, apart from really uh, uh, um, get this message out, um, apart from raising a, obviously a family and, 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 and having a life. Um, but really, this is it. it really, has been his uh, his really his life's uh, 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 work. So, so this is uh, uh, um, that's that's what. Sajjad, can you comment on? I think it was an item from PMW like yesterday uh, that indicated that Abbas is calling for more terror. That he is talking about reinvigorating the Al Aqsa Martyrs Brigade and encouraging the death of Jews, killing of Jews. Can you speak to that and what? what responses within Israel itself? So, so really what we're, what we're seeing with Abbas and the Palestinian Authority is a, um, is, a, is a change of the paradigm that also has a lot to do with or, or, or is predominantly connected to internal Palestinian politics. Um, last year, if you remember, uh, um, Abbas called elections and then canceled them because he knew that he was going to lose. He would lose to Hamas. Um, uh, Fatah really hasn't got back up from that, from being knocked down then. Um, the way that Abbas sees uh, um, as the means to increase the popularity of Fatah is terrorism and war. Um, this has been a gradual process all the way along um, with, with, with periodical jumps of severity. We saw it in, in February, when a, um, a terrorist cell was was was, was killed in in, in Shechem in Nablus, um, and Mahmoud Abbas uh, um, via the tele via a tele uh, uh, telephone uh, a message to the uh, one of the ceremonies um, said that we're calling for you to go out and pay the Jews double for what they just did. He literally killed called for the murder of six Jews. You then had a spout of terrorist attacks that were coming out of that same area, Jenin, Shechem, um, that northern uh, Samaria. Um, and every time uh, um, they would say the same thing. And then we had multiple reports of Palestinian security force members being involved in terrorism and then saying clearly, policemen by day, terrorists by night. And now that's developing more and more um, this idea of using the Palestinian security forces, they're an armed force, they're well-trained, they're Western-trained, and now using them as policemen during the day and terrorists at night, um, this is going back to that, that round of violence, and it could explode really at any time. There's a, a, a powder keg waiting, uh, um, it's called Nasser Abu um, he's a terrorist, murdered seven people, um, he's dying of cancer. He is a Palestinian hero. They've made him a hero. His family is basically uh, um, the, the royal family of Palestinian society, simply because of the fact that there are six brothers, all murderers, all murderers, five of them in prison. Um, Nasser Abu Ahmed was the one who announced the founding of the, uh, uh, the Al-Aqsa Malta Brigades. Um, when he dies of cancer, and he will die, um, they are going to use that as an excuse to incite massive violence. Um, and, and, and I don't know who has Twitter, but uh, we put out today, uh, Palestinian Media Watch put out today on Twitter, really an account of who this guy Nasser Abu Ahmed is. When he dies, the world will be uh, uh, accusing Israel of medical neglect and of everything else and, and, and really terrible things. No. He's a terrorist. He murdered seven people. For the last year, he's received better treatment than he ever would have in the Palestinian Authority. He's only alive because of Israel, but they will use it as an excuse to kill more Jews. Given that Israel has a lot of um, power, technology, etc., why are not more um, strategies used to stop terrorism, such as controlling the uh, Arab media? Could Israel not block this state controlled, whatever you called it, media, and can at this time Arabs access Israeli media? Could that not be bombarded to the communities? 
Well, so I, so I think the answer to that, at least for my uh, professional experience, I, 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 in 2015, I was the, the head of the prosecution um, for Judea and Samaria, and we, uh, um, we found ourselves dealing with the knife intifada. Started in, 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 in October 2015, and suddenly we had to find a way to deal with this. Um, I uh, and my team uh, um, really invented the idea in Israel, at least, of prosecuting Palestinians for incitement on social media. I think it would be unreasonable to assume that Israel can do what no other country really in the world can do is close down the social media. We can't close down satellites. Um, it's satellites that Israel uses as well. Um, once we close down uh, social media, it means that we're not only closing down the Palestinian social media, the, the, the retribution of the social media uh, um, companies would be also to, to cut Israel off social media. So it's not something that we can really do. The question is, what do we do about the Palestinian Authority? There we do have more control and we should wield more power than we actually do. Um, it's a question of policy of, 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 of what at the time uh, um, we see as our priorities and, and, and really how best to fight. Uh, and the incitement, it's not always via the most uh, uh, drastic uh, uh, measures. Thank you, Maurice. Um, you've given us a great deal to think about. Um, I hope everybody listening will share the information that Palestinian Media Watch produces. And this um, webinar has been recorded and it will be sent out to everyone listening as well. I, I need one last word, if I may. Absolutely. The picture that I presented is bleak and it describes the way that anti-Semitism really disseminates all over the world. Israel is strong. We're 74 years in, our country is growing. Last year, there are 120,000 Jewish babies born in Israel. It's, the country is flourishing. Our economy is doing amazingly. Everyone, the best place to be is here. And it scores very high on happiness. I think that's really important and incredible to tell people as well. Everybody we all wear our, our, our rosy uh, colored glasses. Right. I just don't want people to think that um, silence is a virtue. It is not. We need to be collaborating and making change. And we can do that. Elections are coming in the US and in Canada this fall, people should really pay attention to the candidates um, and what they're saying about fighting Jew hatred. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. Good afternoon.